All right, let's get started. Number two here is saying dy dx is equal to four minus x, meaning that there's some function y you know, equals something with x in it, and uh, that dy dx is this, meaning the derivative of y is this. So if we know the derivative, how do we find the function? We take the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of four minus x dx is, Let's see, 4x minus 1 half x squared. I just want to double check and make sure that when we take the derivative of this, it comes out like that. 4x, derivative of that is 4, derivative of negative 1 half x squared, bring down the 2, multiply by 1 half, we get 1. Subtract 1 from the power, we get x. So that's our y. Didn't nearly need that much room. I'll just move that up here. OK, uh, next. Same thing, dy dx equals, but now this equals y plus 2. So we need to get the dx's with the x's and the y's with the dy's. All right, so um, let's see. Remember that we, we, we've never taken the antiderivative of something that had dx or dy in the denominator. So let's multiply by dx on both sides. So we get dy equals y plus 2 dx times dx. Okay, then we, get to, we want to get the y's over here with the dy's, all right? And so let's divide by y plus 2 on both sides. So I cancel out the factor of y plus 2. dy over y plus 2 equals dx. Take the antiderivative of both sides. Um, well, if we look at y plus 2, the derivative of y plus 2 is just dy, right? If this is u, then the derivative of u is, is dy, so it's du. So we have du over u, so that's the natural log of the absolute value of u, which is y plus 2, equals, what's the absolute, or the uh, antiderivative of dx? That's just x, 1 dx. Um, you can think of this as just the antiderivative of 1, 1 times dx. Got to get y by itself here, so we rewrite it in exponential form, e to the x equals y plus 2. So e to the x minus 2 equals y. OK. Uh, the only thing we forgot here is we have a plus c. That was my fault. Uh, clear this out of here. OK, so that's e to the x plus c. Um, remember that e to the x plus c is the same as e to the x times e to the c, right? That's why we would add exponents, is if we multiply things with the same base. Uh, we'll call it, we can call this c1. e to the something is just something. Let's call it c. So we have c times e to the x equals y plus 2. So we're out of room here. Uh, c times e to the x minus 2 equals y. Right. Now, dy dx equals 4 minus y. Really, really similar problem. Let's multiply both sides by dx. dy equals 4 minus y times dx. Uh, divide both sides by 4 minus y. dy over 4 minus y equals dx. Right. So we take the antiderivative of both sides. Obviously, the antiderivative of dx is just x. But for this one, the, the, you know, if we take this to be u, this isn't quite the derivative of the denominator. If we take the derivative of this, we'll actually get negative dy. So we'll put a negative there and a negative there. Right? Our u substitution skills coming into play. Um, so now we have u, and this whole thing is du. So we can take negative natural log of the absolute value of u, which is 4 minus y. All right. We could, um, or we should have done plus c here, x plus c. Uh, we could do natural log of absolute value of 4 minus y equals uh, uh, negative, let's see, negative x plus c. See, even if I put a negative to this c, uh, if I, I can still consider c to be some number that I'm adding, even if that number turns out to be negative. Okay, so that doesn't really affect a plus c. Um, 
Next, we'll do e to the negative x plus c equals 4 minus y. All right. So this would be c times e to the negative x. And we'll call that c. Well, let's call, uh, call that c2. We'll call this c. C1, C2, this is C3. Like all these Cs are, 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 would actually be probably different, but they're just representing constants. Okay. Um, so C times e to the negative x equals 4 minus y. And if we get y by itself, we'll get uh, y equals 4 minus Ce to the negative x. We haven't left much room for this guy, so we'll take them out and put on a different page. All right, so y prime equals the square root of x over 3y. I like to write it as dy dx. That's what y prime is, just the derivative. That's another way to write the derivative. Square root of x over 3y. Again, we want to get the y's and dy's on one side, x's and dx's on the other side. I think it's pretty clear if we multiply both sides by dx, both sides by 3y, we'll get 3y dy equals square root of x dx. Take the antiderivative of both sides. Uh, the antiderivative of 3y dy would be, let's see, 3 halves y squared equals the antiderivative of the square root of x, or x to the 1 half. Uh, let's see, 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus c. So you get y by itself. Um, let's multiply both sides by 2 thirds. Okay, so we multiply both sides by 2 thirds. That's going to give us uh, y squared equals 4 over 9 x to the 3 halves. And I should distribute that uh, through 2 thirds um, to this guy and to c, but Whatever, it's multiply c by some other constant, it'll still be a constant. c just stands for constant. So we don't have to write 2 thirds, uh, two thirds c. That's kind of a silly thing to write. Okay, so as you do each of these steps, just keep uh, writing c as long as it makes sense, as long as that uh, holds. Um, and next, we'd, uh, uh, we could take the square root of both sides and get y is equal to um, the square root of 4 ninths x to the 3 halves plus c, just like that. Uh, yeah, I'm just taking a look at the, at the, the solutions manual or, or what you would have the back of your book if this answer was in there. Um, they just came back here. Came back here and just multiplied through by 6 so that it would cancel out that 2 and that 3. Uh, so you multiply by 6, you're going to get uh, 9y squared equals um, 4x to the 3 halves plus c. c you know, you, you multiplied it by 6, but it's still a constant. And, uh, and they have 9y squared minus 4x to the 3 halves equals c. So you could do that too. That is a function y, right? There's a relationship between x and y here. So um, on to the next one. Write and solve a differential equation that models a verbal statement. So interpreting the, these verbal statements is a useful skill, um, at least in the AP test. Okay, And uh, that's definitely in our interest. So the rate of change of q with respect to t, okay, so that would be dq dt is is inversely proportional to the square of t. Inversely proportional to the square of t. If something is inversely proportional, that means that it's a constant divided by the thing it's inversely proportional to. Right? We talked about proportional. Proportional uh, means k times something. And inversely proportional means k divided by a variable. And it's inversely proportional to the square of t. All right. So let's see. We've got to um, solve this differential equation. 
If you multiply both sides by dt, we'll have the t and the dt on one side. Over here, uh, dq, uh, which is a lot like dy. It's just that the variable q is being used. Equals, let's say, dt over t squared times k. So we'll take the antiderivative of both sides. The antiderivative of dq would just be q. 1 dq. Um, that's equal to, we take the antiderivative of a constant times dt over t squared, we just get k. Remember, we can take that uh, constant multiple out. Um, this would be the antiderivative of t to the negative 2. Right? So we would have uh, t, negative t to the negative 1. When we take negative 1 times negative 1, we get a positive 1 times k, um, should be multiplied by, uh, and subtract 1 from the exponent, we'll get an exponent of negative 2. So we get q is equal to negative k, let's say, over t, if we were to multiply this out and put t to the negative 1 as t uh, to the first in the, in the denominator. The rate of change of p, so dp, uh, with respect to t, so dp dt, is proportional to, so it's equal to some constant times, whatever they say here, proportional to 10 minus t. All right, so we'll multiply both sides by dt. And we've got dp equals uh, k times 10 minus t dt. And we take the antiderivative of both sides, knowing that that constant k is going to come out, that constant multiple of k. And so the antiderivative of dp is p, starting to see a pattern there, I hope, equals k times the antiderivative of 10 minus t. That would be 10t minus uh, 1 half t squared plus c. Oops, we should add a plus c up there. Um, yeah, you can distribute the k. You can not distribute the k. Um, it doesn't really matter we have our function p that is solved for. Okay, next we have the rate of change of n with respect to s, so that's dn ds, uh, is proportional to, which means it's equal to a constant, times 250 minus s. Right? Uh, not a whole lot different from this one, actually. So we'll multiply both sides by ds, we get dn, is equal to k times 250 minus s ds. Take the antiderivative of both sides. Uh, we've got n is equal to constant multiple of k can come outside of the integral uh, times 250 t minus 1 half s squared plus c. Um, just making sure all that works out, yeah, okay. Uh, the rate of change of y with respect to x, dy dx, uh, varies jointly, so there's an, another, so we've got varies, or, or, or proportional, is proportional to, is inversely proportional to, and varies jointly, okay? So varies jointly it means, um, it's kind of like it's proportional um, to two different variables. Okay, so varies jointly means that it's equal to a constant k times x, one of the variables, times l minus y, an expression involving the other variable. Okay, so let's um, let's see. Now we, we've got to separate these variables. X is with dx's, y is with dy's. Gonna Multiply both by, both sides by dx, divide both sides by l minus y. So we're going to wind up with dy over l minus y equals kx dx. I'm going to take the antiderivative of both sides. I'm going to just go ahead and pull that constant multiple of k outside. Um, so what's the antiderivative of dy over l minus y? Well, from our experience with... Um, these two here, you can see how we have uh, 
there it is right there, L minus Y, right? L is just some constant, so it's, it's very much like that, right? So the antiderivative of this, what we've got is uh, like a U down here. The derivative of this would be negative dy, right? This would be 0 minus dy. So I have a negative there, so put a negative outside, OK? So the antiderivative of this would be, I'm going to need some room here, negative natural log of the absolute value of L minus y. Right. Uh, on this side, the antiderivative of k times x dx is uh, k times 1 half x squared plus c. OK, that is, that's quite a, quite a doozy. Um, let's see, I wonder. We can uh, go ahead and solve for y. So let's see. We'll do multiply both sides by a negative. So we'll take a natural log of the absolute value of l minus y is equal to um, negative k over 2 x squared. Just multiply that k and that 1 half. And uh, we'll call it, still call it plus c. OK. Uh, we, we multiply that or multiply that by a negative. It's whatever. It's still plus a constant, even if that constant is a negative number. All right, so now we'll take e to the power of this side, negative k over two x squared. This is very tiny, and I apologize. Plus c, but remember, if we add something in the exponents, the same as multiplying by e to the c, which e to the c is itself a constant. So we'll multiply it by c, so we'll call that when c1, multiplied c1 by a negative, we've got c2. Uh, we rewrote it as e to the negative k over 2x squared times e to the c, but e to the c is a constant, so we just give it the new name c. So constant times e to the negative k over 2x squared is equal to l minus y, and when we get all done, we'll have y is equal to l minus c e Oh, this is so tiny. To the negative k over 2x squared. Okay, That looks really bad. So hopefully you could hear me saying what that is. Uh, and it's kind of hard to see there. But we're going to continue on. OK, so um, given a differential equation, an equation that involves a, a function and its derivative, uh, a point, okay, a point on the function y, okay, so we find the function y, we plug in 0 for x, and so we get out 1 half for y, okay, but what we have is the derivative, so we need to find y, okay, um, so they're given a differential equation, a point, and a slope field. So first, sketch two approximate solutions of the differential equation on the slope field, one of which passes through the given point. So the given point is 0, 1 half, okay. So the thing about this function is this is its derivative. And the thing about this slope field is all they've done is go into every x comma y, plugged the x and y in here, and said that's the value of dy dx. So that's the value of the slope. And then they show you what the slope would look like. Right? They actually draw a little hash mark that is at the slope uh, that this derivative tells us. Okay. So for example, um, let's see, at I guess this is, oh, this is 4. So this is 1, and this is 1, OK? And that's a half. So at 1, 1, 1 times 1 is 1, so it has a slope of 1. At 1, 2, that's 1 times 2. That's going to be a slope of 2. You can see the slope is about 2, up 2 and over 1. Um, let's see, we're at 1 half. So at x is 1 half, y is 1 x is 1 half, y is 1, that's going to be a slope of 1 half, and it looks like that slope is about 1 up 1 and over 2. Right, so they're just plugging in every x comma y into here and then getting the slope and then drawing a little piece of that slope. So this function y should have these slopes for its tangent lines depending on like if it goes through this point right here then its tangent line should be about that slopey which would send it in this direction, which would send it to about this point, which should be about that slopey, and it should be about that slopey, and 
about this slopey, right? So it should look something like that, I would think. Okay, if we draw another one that goes through this point, as we go this way, it looks like we should be, you know, what kind of slope would this be? This would be x times y, that would be zero for x, uh, and whatever for y, anything along the y-axis is gonna have a slope of zero. They're all gonna be flat. So it's gonna go like this, and then we just kind of follow the slopes so our solution should look something like that, I would think. Okay. So we drew two solutions. Those are two functions that have slopes according to this derivative. Um, one of them goes to the point like they asked for. Use integration to find the particular solution of the differential equation and use a graphing calculator, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then compare the graph that we see on the graphing calculator to the graph that we drew. All right, so first let's find... Um, the solution, let's find y, okay. So let's um, multiply both sides by dx, divide both sides by y. We're gonna get dy over y equals dx over x. Uh, or no, sorry, it'll give us x dx. x times dx. Take the antiderivative of both sides. We're gonna get the natural log of the absolute value of y. And we are going to get one half x squared plus c on this side. Remember, we could put a plus c over here, but then we could just subtract that c from both sides, and whatever this c minus that c is will be this new c. So we just need a plus c on the x side. And we're going to get y by itself, so we get e to the x squared over 2. Okay, we would put plus c, but then we could just rewrite it as c times e to the x squared over 2, we'll call it c1, because the c and the c are not necessarily the same. That's equal to y. Okay, so y equals c e to the x squared over 2. All right. Um, so it's c that we don't know, but we do know that when you put in 0 for x, you get 1 half for y. So 1 half for y, c times e to the 0 over 2, that's 1 half equals c, because e to the 0 over 2 is e to the 0, and anything to the 0 is 1. 1 times c is c, c is 1 half. Okay, so our function, now we know c is 1 half, 1 half e to the x squared over 2. We can grab our calculator here. y equals, blur that out. Uh, so e, e to the x squared, x squared over 2. Uh, over 2, right? So we take e to the x squared over 2, we divide that by 2, we've got that. Let's take a look at the graph. Hey, look at that. Just like we drew, it looks just like that. We're the best. Okay, we can find a function y equals f of t passing through the point zero ten 10 with the given first derivative. Use a graphing utility to graph the solution. Okay. So we have dy dt equals 1 half t, right? We're going to have y be the function they're looking for. So we'll collect the dy's and the, and, the, and the y's and the t's and the dt's. Let's multiply both sides by dt. We get dy equals 1 half t dt. <coughs> okay. Um, take the antiderivative of both sides. And we get y equals constant multiple of 1 half times 1 half t squared plus c. y equals 1 fourth t squared plus c. Okay, if we take the derivative of this, we're going to get 2 times 1 fourth is uh, 1 half times t to the minus 1 in the exponent is t, so we got 1 half t. Uh, the derivative of y dy. Alright, so we got this plus c that we're not Sure, we always put that plus c there, but since they tell us that there's a point 0, 10, we can now find c and find the particular solution. That's what we're working on right now. Uh, oh, it doesn't say particular solution. We're finding the particular solution right now. Okay, that's equal to 1 fourth times 0 squared plus c. A lot of times I do this is nice for us, making this term go away, and the c is simply 10. So now we just replace c with 10, and 1 fourth t squared plus 10 is our function. Uh, I'm going to graph. You know what? We don't need to graph it. We found it. Okay. Um, 
next we've got this thing going on. We want to find y here, so let's multiply both sides by dt. That leaves us with dy equals negative 3 fourths square root t dt. We'll take the antiderivative of both sides. I, I keep cutting off this because they're giving us constant multiples here, and constant multiples can be pulled outside of integrals, right? So here the antiderivative of dy is y equals our constant multiple of 3 fourths times, if we make this be a 1 half, we're going to get uh, 2 thirds t to the 3 halves plus c. Clean this up a bit. Negative. Uh, threes cancel, and two, gives us a two, so one half t to the three halves plus c. And they give us the point zero, ten, so ten equals negative one half times zero to the three halves, that's easy. So c is ten again, so we can replace this with ten. Okay. Next. Uh, we're going to write and solve the differential equation that models the verbal sentence, evaluate the solution at a specific value uh, of the independent variable. Okay, so the rate of change of y, let me get a different color, dy, uh, is proportional to y, okay, and the other variable is, that, is x, so dy dx is proportional to, it's proportional to means k times whatever, it's proportional to y, okay, doesn't even say anything about x right now. Um, so first, let's uh, separate the variables. We got multiply by dx, divide by y. We'll get dy over y equals k dx, antiderivative of both sides. The antiderivative of dy over y is the natural log of y that equals to the antiderivative of k dx would just be kx, because k is just a, um, a constant. So e to, oh, this is plus c. So c e to the kx. Remember, the reason I'm doing that is because if I write e to the kx plus c, I can just rewrite it as a constant times e to the kx equals y. So that is our um, general solution. We can't get any more specific until they give us specifics, which they then do. They say x equals 0, y equals 4. Um, and when x equals 3, y is equal to 10. Okay, why are they doing that? Because we don't know what k is and we don't know what c is. Okay, so they're giving us two pieces of information so we can find the value of those two variables. Um, what is the value of y when k equals 6? Okay, so we got some work to do here. They're telling us that in this equation, when x is 0, uh, y is 4. So that's e to the 0, that's 1, so c is 4. Well, that's nice. That was just kind of a gimme. The, uh, the golf ball was just inches from the cup, and we just tapped it in. Now we know that c is 4. Okay, so we can fill this back in with a 4 e to the k times, now x is 3, and y is 10. All right. Um, so now let's see, we'll solve for k, right? So divide by 4, we'll get e to the k times 3, or 3k, three equals 5 over 2 when we divide by 4 on both sides. Um, the, let's see, the natural, I think we're going to move this to another page. The natural log of 5 halves equals 3k. So one third the natural log of five halves equals k. So our equation uh, can be filled in with c is four and k is this monstrosity. Okay, so y equals four times e to the one third natural log of 5 halves uh -huh, times x. Uh, that's it. We have y on the other side. So what is the value of y when x is 6? y equals 4 times e to the 1 third times the natural log of 5 halves, 5 halves times 6. Okay. Uh, so here's a nice little trick. 
When we multiply exponents, remember we multiply exponents when we've raised an exponent to an exponent. Reminder, x squared to the third is x to the sixth, right? It's the product of two and three. So let's rewrite e to the all of this stuff as e to the natural log of five halves, because a nice thing happens with that, raised to the one third times six, which is two. Right, we could just do six times one third, we get two. Okay. Well, e to the natural log of 5 halves is just 5 halves. They're inverse uh, functions. So this is just 5 halves. This is 5 halves squared. Okay, So 4 times 25 over 4, that's 5 halves squared. That's 25. All right, so let's see. What's the next one? Which is. Uh, yeah, it has the same directions. Right, so we got to write it out, solve it, and do all that stuff that we did in the last one. The rate of change of n, so dn with respect to t, apparently, dn dt, um, is proportional to n. So it's equal to a constant times n. All right, so let's find that function n at least the general solution. dn equals, um, let's see, dn over n equals k dt. If we multiply both sides by dt and divide by n, take the antiderivative of both sides, we get the natural log, uh, the absolute value of n, because the antiderivative of dn over n would be the natural log of the absolute value of n. That equals kx. Okay, so, uh, plus c, let's say c1. So e to the power of kx plus c1, but then we can rewrite it as c times e to the kx. That's equal to n. Okay, so we don't know what k is, we don't know what c is, so they tell us that t equals 0 and n equals 250. Okay, so c times e to the k times 0 equals 250. So c must be 250, right? because e to the 0 will be 1. c times 1 is c, so c is 250. Um, so now we know what c is. That's nice. We can just plug c in here. We have 250 times e to the k times, well, they also tell us that, oh, I keep writing x here. This is a t, t, t. Okay, so when, uh, also when t is 1, so we'll put a 1 there, uh, then n is 400, so n is 400, right? n is 400 when t is 1. Let's see, let's divide both sides by 250. e to the k equals uh, 400 over 250 equals, let's see, 40 over 25, uh, 8 over 5. 8 over 5. So the natural log of 8 fifths is equal to k. And so they want to know what the value of n is when t is 4. Now we know what k is. We know what c is. We are given a value of t and we evaluate. Okay. So our function is n equals c and k plugged in uh, 250 times e, that's a 5, 250 times e, to the k, which we just found, the natural log of 8 fifths, uh, times t, which is, uh, what is it, 4. All right, we'll use that little trick that we used in the previous problem, n equals 250 times e to the natural log of 8 fifths, raised to the fourth. That's why we would multiply these that's why we would have a product of two numbers, is because we raise an exponent to an exponent. So n equals 250. Well, e to the natural log of 8 fifths is just 8 fifths. 8 fifths. To the fourth, n equals, what is? That's 8 to the fourth. 4,096, so 2. 
fifty times four thousand ninety six over I think this would be six twenty five, let's see. Five to the fourth, six twenty five. And then we simplify as much as possible. And I know what I'm going to do. This is what I would do on an AP test if I had this calculator. 250 times 4,096 over 625 gives me that. I'm just going to go with this. Convert it to a fraction. 8192 over 5. I think that's what it said. 8192 over 5. That's correct. Okay. Doing great. All right. Uh, find the exponential function y equals c e to the k t that passes through the given points. So they're saying that this is modeled by some exponential function y equals c e to the k t. Okay. Um, what do we know? Well, we know that when x is zero, y is one half. Okay. Y is one half. When x or t, excuse me, t is 0. They keep doing this favor of putting a 0 in the exponent. c times e to the 0 would be 1, so c times 1 is uh, c, so c is 1 half. So now we know what c is, so we can fill in y equals 1 half times e to the k times t. Well, we also know that when t is 5, y is 5. Don't need that. So we can solve for k. Let's see, uh, we got 10 equals e to the k times 5, 5k. The natural log of 10 equals 5k. So 1 fifth, the natural log of 10 equals k. And we can fill all the rest of it in. Now we know k, now we know c, c and k. So y equals 1 half e to the one fifth natural log of ten. Uh, let's see, that's k times t, which we can rewrite as one half times e to the um, natural log of ten to the t over five. Yeah, it's one fifth times natural log. Of 10. Yeah. And e to the natural log of ten is just ten, so we have one half times 10 to the t over 5 power. All right. All right. Yeah, we could do it that way. Or, or we could just um, come back here. We could multiply 1 fifth times natural log of 10 and figure out what that number is and, and leave it as a e to that power times t, whichever we like. All right, very similar thing. This is represented by an exponential function. Um, they tell us that when when uh, x is or when t is zero, then uh, y is four, which tells should be pretty clear that c is going to be four then. So we know that y equals four times e to the k times. Okay, so they're also telling us that when t is five, y is one half. So let's substitute those things in. So now we're going to solve for k. We've got uh, 1 eighth equals e to the 5k. So the natural log of 1 eighth equals uh, 5k. So 1 fifth, the natural log of 1 eighth is equal to k. So now we know k. We know c is 4. So y equals um, c, which is 4, times e to the one fifth times the natural log of one eighth times t, and we could go ahead and figure out what one fifth the natural log of eight is, or one eighth is. So the natural log of one eighth is that divided by five is that. So uh, negative point four one six. Negative point one four six. T is the exponent of E, which is multiplied by 4, which is equal to Y. Or we could have done this little trick too and come out with, uh, with something like this. Up to you. 
Okay, so now they're telling us that uh, uh, radium-226 has a half-life of almost 1,600 years. The initial quantity is 10 grams. How much is there after 10,000 years? Okay, the exponential function can be written in some way like this. Right. Um, so and and c is the initial amount. So y equals ten e to the kt. So um, let's see. So we could say that uh, in order to figure it, we need to know what k is. To solve for k, we just need a known value of t and y. Well, if t is 1,599, then that's one half-life, meaning that we have one half of what we started with, which means we have five uh, grams. So one half equals, or divided by 10 on both sides, e to the 1599k. So the natural log of 1 half equals 1599k. And so natural log of 1 half, uh, the natural log of 1 half over 1599 is equal to k. So we know k and we know c. y is equal to 10 e to the natural log of 1 half over 1599 times t times t. Filled in uh, c, we filled in k, and now we can plug in any t that we want. y equals, and we plug in 10,000, y equals 10 times e to the natural log of 1 half over 1599 times 10,000 y equals, we got the old calculator, uh, 10 times e to the natural log, mm -hmm. let's say, let's take 10,000 times the natural log of 0.5, divide that by 1599, and we have 0.13 one zero three grams left after ten after ooh, that's ten thousand years so that's point one three one zero three okay if we plug in a thousand that's uh, not going to be very difficult so I will just look up that answer here um, six point four eight grams right. Getting kind of close to uh, half of the original amount. Uh, the only thing is, um, it you know a thousand years isn't quite a full half life, right? So we haven't quite got to half the amount. All right, for number thirty-four, and this one is uh, slightly tricky. Um, they tell us that there's one point five grams after a thousand years, so. Given that the equation looks like this in some way, we know that when t is one, or sorry, yeah, when t is 1,000, then we have 1 1.5 grams left. So that's that's y. So 1.5 is equal to c e to the k times 1,000. Okay. Well, what do we do with that? I mean, we got a c and we got a k. We we don't know either one of them. So thinking a little bit ahead, we think, you know, if I put 10 in here as the initial amount, I don't know what the initial amount is, right? But if I put 10 there, then I know after one half-life there'd be 5. If I put 20 there, there would be 10. If I put 1,300 there, there would be half of 1,300. That was a bad choice. Uh, 650. Uh, and then we would divide both sides by this, and we always wind up with one half, right? So we actually, we still have uh, this to be true. We're going to have, let me write a different equation. One half of the amount is going to be left after we take e to the k times one half life. 
when one half life passes, we'll have one half of what we started with. Right? So we can still solve for k. Well, k is going to be the same as it was over here then. So k is still the natural log of 1 half over 1599. So that's still k. And then we can figure out what c is, and we'll know that. And then we'll be able to, t to calculate this. Okay, so uh, you know, 1.5 equals c times e to the natural log of 1 half uh, over 1599 times 1000. So now we can solve for C. Right? So just take 1.5 and divide by this grotesque monstrosity. All right. So 1.5 divided by this thing, E, to the power of, let's just say, uh, 10,000, let's say 1,000, over 1599 times the natural log of 1 half and C is 0.5 uh, let's see it doesn't seem it doesn't seem right Oh, look at that's that was dumb. Right, I put not e to the one half, the natural log of one half. The natural log of one half. That makes more sense. Two point three one four. That's C. That's the original amount. Okay. So y equals 2.314 times uh, e to the natural log of 1 half over 1599 times t. All right. And all we need to do now, we already have for 1,000. Well, let's put the original amount, 2.314 grams. Uh, this is in grams, of course. And then after 10,000, we'll just plug 10,000 in here. And uh, the work's already been done. It should be. 0.03. All right, last two, Newton's law of cooling. Um, so in class we did this, and we did it wrong. Okay, here's what the the faulty assumption that I used. I assumed that the uh, the function that tells us whatever temperature uh, this what is it object, <laughs> whatever this object is that it can be modeled by this equation, e to the uh, kt, which is true if, uh, if it's a typical exponential function. Like the graph looks like this, either like that, or if it's exponential decay, it looks like that. Right? It approaches 0 as as we move forward in time, obviously this is cooling, so the temperature would be falling and approaching zero. No, not approaching zero, approaching the surrounding temperature, right? So this model is not appropriate. Completely inappropriate. Okay. But if it does follow Newton's law of cooling, then we know that the rate at which the temperature changes is uh, proportional to the difference between the current temperature, y, minus the surrounding temperature, I don't know, t, okay, whatever the surrounding temperature is. This is the current temperature of the object and the room temperature, the temperature that is approaching over time, okay? So the temperature of the surroundings is 80. So what are we going to do now? Um, well, what are they asking us to do? The environment, uh, constant temperature of 80 degrees. Core temperature starts out this, so at time zero it's this, one hour. After it's removed, the core temperature is this. Find the core temperature. Five hours off the object is removed. So we're going to need to find the function y that tells us the temperature of the object and figure out what temperature it is at five hours. 
So we have a differential equation. It's involving y and its derivative. So we need to find the, uh, the, the function y, right? Same as we've done many, many times. dy over y minus 80 equals k dx, like we divide by y over y minus 80, multiply by dx, and we get this guy here. Um, do the antiderivative of both sides, we get the natural log of the absolute value of y minus 80 equals k, uh, let's say x, it could be t, but we, we, we chose x, so it's kx plus c. So y minus 80 equals ce to the kx, remember e to the power of kx plus c, but then we can rewrite it as c times e to the k x, we call that C1, so that we can uh, tell that th these two C's are not necessarily the same. So y equals C e to the kx plus 80. So the function looks something like this, okay? Um, its core temperature, when an object is removed from a furnace, so right when it's pulled out at time zero, really, the temperature is 1500. So the temperature is 1500 when the time is 0, C e to the k times 0 plus 80. So 1500 equals, well, e to the 0 is 1, so c times 1 is c plus 80. Subtract 80 on both sides, 1420 equals c. So now we know that c is 1420. We can plug that back in and solve for x, given that after uh, one hour, we have a temperature of 1120, right? So after one hour, uh, let's see, after one hour, the temperature, the temperature, one hour, the temperature is 1120. We now know C and we can solve for K. Okay, so Y, which is 1120 now, 1120 is equal to C, which we just figured out, which is 1420, times E to the K times 1 plus 80. Uh, let's subtract 80 on both sides, so we are at... 1140, 11, oh, good grief, yeah, 40. 1140, subtracting 80 on both sides, um, equals 1420 times e to the k, it's just a k up there, 1140 over 1420 equals e to the k. So the natural log of 1140 over 1420 is equal to K. And then we want to figure out what the temperature is after five hours. So we know now C and we know K. So Y is equal to C, what was C? 1420 times E to the K times T, or X, excuse me. Natural log of 1140 over 1420 times x, right, times x, plus 80. We want x to be 5 hours. All right, so we do all this stuff. 1420 times e to the natural log of 1140 over 1420 raised to the 5. I'm just using this trick that I used before in previous problems. So y equals 1420 times 1140 over 1420, because that's what happens when you have e to the natural log of a number, raised to the fifth, plus 80. Y equals, let's stop messing around here, uh, 1420 times 1140, what am I doing, 1140, over 1420 raised to the fifth power plus 80. Yeah, it is 553 degrees, 0.56 Fahrenheit. Whoa. Um, well, shoot. My
And I'm going to go back and fix a mistake that you probably caught a long time ago and were yelling at me about this. Obviously, when you subtract 80 is not 10, not 11, 40, but 10, 40. 10, 40, 10, 40. I'm just going to go back and change all these to 10, 40s. Oh, my. Let's get a small eraser. I can't do that. 10, 40, 10, 40. 10, 40. Go back here. 10, 40, 10, 40. Uh -huh, uh -huh, yep. Go back into the calculator. Change it to 10, 40 instead of 11, 40. No problem there. I'm going to try and hit enter on the calculator this time. 379.24. Let's fix some mistakes. I oh, now I forgot the temperature. 379. 379.24. Whoa. Okay. Let's see. Hot look at this place in a freezer. It just kept to a constant of 20 degrees. The initial temperature is 160. After five minutes, the liquid temperature is 60. How much longer will it take for the temperature to be 30 degrees Fahrenheit? You know what? I'm going to let you do this one, and I'll give you some help here. We're still going to do all this work to figure out, basically, here's the equation we're looking for. Okay, We're going to write an equation similar to this one. We're going to take the antiderivative. We're going to get down to y equals blah, 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 blah. Okay, It's going to look very similar to that. We're going to plug in uh, something for uh, x or t or whatever variable you're thinking of. Uh, solve for C and solve for K. Uh, that'll be great. We'll fill in C and K. Um, the only thing is we're not going to be plugging in a time of 5 uh, and figuring out how much, what the temperature is. We're going to be seeing what temperature it is and going back and finding what time that happens. Right? So we'll be solving actually for the exponent instead of figuring out what temperature it is. Okay. But all in all, until this last little bit right here, this part in red, all the other stuff is the same. The only, th the only thing that's going to be different is we're going to have our equation. It's not going to look like this. It's going to be different numbers. We're going to plug in 30 here and figure out what x is, what t is, whatever variable. Okay? Uh, that is all. Thank you for hanging with me and watching all that. And uh, I hope that was helpful.